wealth, yoga, wine. Welcome to the podcast. I'm Valerie Hale. Ready? Conversation. It's about conflict. It's about resolving a conflict in a way that builds bridges and strengthens a relationship. And this can be used with your superiors at the workplace, certainly in all kinds of relationships, your, your spouse, your children, siblings. The 10-minute sweaty conversation is important because it's natural to us, to people, to believe that conflict is negative, that it's bad, where in reality it is one of the stepping stones to create a foundation for long-lasting, healthy relationships. The fact is is that it, it builds bridges and it strengthens us. When you don't resolve conflict quickly and in a healthy manner, you're actually going to generate bigger problems. When you use this sweaty 10-minute conversation, you're actually going to generate positive growth. Mary Morrissey talks about many times, notice what you're noticing. And in this 10-minute sweaty conversation, you're going to notice at the beginning, before you even address this, that you feel discomfort, that you feel unease. And Mary says that if it's left unattended, it's just going to fester into a bigger issue. She explains that if you were feeling this three times about an event, a transaction, a situation, it's time to have that sweaty conversation. And here are four out of eight steps that she suggests that we employ. The first one is shovel while the pile is small. In a previous podcast, I talked about fair fighting and gunny sack is when we put all of these issues in this big sack and we wait until we blow up. So start shoveling when the pile is small and manageable. When you address a smaller issue, you gain trust in your partner, in your workplace, and you show that you can resolve issues. When you wait to gunny sack them and explode, then we, we actually illustrate that we're incapable of resolving anything. And the next one, go direct. That means go to the person with whom you're having the conflict, the uncomfortable feelings. Don't go to the coworker, don't go to the mother-in-law, don't go to the boss, go direct. The next step is ask permission to start this conversation and hopefully you can have the conversation in a quick time frame. If not, then have a mutual agreement for when you can meet again and resolve it. But try to resolve it within the, a few hours, certainly by the next day. Otherwise, it's going to become a larger pile. The fourth step is to set the intention. Let them know at the beginning of the conversation that you want to resolve this, that you want to strengthen the relationship and strengthen the communication. That's how you begin the eight steps to the sweaty 10-minute conversation. Kundalini Yoga is the world's oldest yoga. It's the only yoga I have studied for 26 years every morning. And the science and technology behind Kundalini Yoga is it's a way to build your immune system and also to strengthen your health. I bring this up because I was recently at my property in Hyde Park, New York, which is for sale, 40 acres and three beautiful houses. One of them is a French-themed bed and breakfast, which is now closed, but rented. Great rental income, folks. Dutchess County is known for Lyme disease, and one of my best friends got bitten by a tick. Now, not every person is going to get Lyme disease, but he got it really bad, or leukleosis, or something like that. The reason I bring this up because it's a virus, and Harva Kosh, my yoga teacher, teaches us an anti-cancer breath. It's not just for cancer, it's for any virus. And when the pandemic first came out, 
she was having us do this every day, several times a day. Now, I have forgotten to do it, but when I was in Dutchess County, I also got bit by a little tiny tick, and I immediately began the anti-cancer breath, or antivirus breath. It's just like as though you were panting like a dog. You stick your tongue out as far as you can. It's a little uncomfortable, but pant just like a dog. It sounds like this. (laughs) And you want the breath to come from your belly. The important thing is that you are cleaning your system out of a virus. This works, it works, it works. And even if you do know someone who does have cancer, have them use this in conjunction with what the doctors, their medical professionals are helping them with also. But this is a powerful, powerful breath. You can go to my website and click on yoga and you will go to Howard Prakash's uh, website and also sign up for her virtual classes. Wine. I'm gonna talk about a fad. I'm sure you have all seen the hard seltzers. I will not taste them. I have two in my refrigerator that someone gave to me, and I looked at the back at the contents. And I just, I get it that they're going for the millennials, but the cleanest way to eat and drink is when you have one ingredient or only up to three. I've been a vegetarian for 40 years plus, and I I eat as much as I can straight from the garden. And when I drink, I make sure that it's healthy wines. So the hard seltzer fad, if you must drink them, drink them in very limited amounts because I think there's about seven or eight chemicals in them, in the hard seltzer. So be careful. I want you to be healthy if you're drinking and you don't need to have all these chemicals in your body. Search out biodynamic wines and organic wines. The biggest difference between biodynamic and organic is that biodynamic is... 10 times more involved work than organic wines. Biodynamic wines are automatically organic wines because of their basic practice. Two differences for biodynamic wines is that the biodynamic wines also have to have their cellars or their cave, as they're called in France and Italy. They cannot use any kind of chemical to keep them clean, therefore no bleach or things of that sort. They also plant by the moon, the moon cycles. What that looks like is, for instance, I volunteer at our Gulfport Community Garden. I now live in Florida. And I took up lunar gardening. I wanted to show our volunteers that it works. And we had an amazing crop of arugula and lettuce. It it is now just stopping, although I'm going to plant arugula again. The full moon, right before the full moon, is the best time to plant anything that has roots because what happens is the the essence of the full moon, the strength of it, is that it pulls the natural water that's in the soil, in the ground, it pulls it into the plant that's under the ground. That's the best way to think of lunar planting is what the moon does as far as the earth is concerned in planting. In conclusion... The sweaty 10-minute conversation, try to realize that you want to address it quickly. Shovel while the pile is small. Go direct to the person with whom you have the issue. Ask permission. Ask permission. It shows respect. And set the intention at the beginning so that the person with whom you're having the issue or discomfort knows that you're trying to build a bridge. And of course, Kundalini Yoga, it has saved my immunity system, my health, my mental acuity for 26 years plus. So try that. And of course, wine, drink clean. (laughs) That's all I can really say. I am not a life coach. I'm not a consultant. I do this podcast to help hundreds of people on a weekly basis with really fun topics. Merci. Au revoir.